Shannon Garrity takes over as the new head coach of the Blaine Bengals, replacing the departed Dave Nelson. And tonight, his team falls behind early. Moundsview gets on the board. Ron Gardis, 39 yards on the touchdown run. The Mustangs would add a two-point conversion. And at halftime, it is eight zip. Blaine not used to being behind. Moundsview with a tough defense. They were tough all last season. So Blaine comes out firing third quarter. Ryan Parsons, 15 carries, 82 yards. The quarterback takes off, 21-yard run for the touchdown. With a two-point conversion, it's 8-8. Ensuing kickoff, and this spells trouble for Moundsview. They would fumble the kickoff. Blaine would recover, and it would cost the Mustangs. Chris Bulina will get in from four yards out, and Blaine leads it 15-8, and that would be enough. For good measure, however, Patrick Williams will score in a nine-yard run, and the Bengals open the 2002 season with a 22-8 win over Moundsview. Congratulations to Shannon Garrity. He gets his first win as the Bengals head coach, and we got these comments after the game. It's the offensive line the whole way. The whole line stepped it up second half, and we came out there, and they took charge, and it was, they made it easy for us tonight. They should have scored more on us in the first half. They were moving the ball at will, and and we needed to adjust and, and slow them down, and we did that in the second half, and our kids fought, and we always ask them, fight, fight, fight. In the second half, they came out and fought. This was a great football game, defending 5A champion Hastings, 21 to 18. Champlin Park led this game 18 to six at halftime. John Majeski takes a third quarter swing pass from Thor Trip, turns it into a 23-yard touchdown, trimming Champlin's lead to 18-13. He had 105 yards receiving tonight. Rebel running back Drew Meyer, 24 carries, 188 yards, but a big mistake. He fumbles the football, and it's recovered by the Raiders of the Champlain Park 29. First play, it's trip to Tom Cruise. No, not that Tom Cruise. Down to the 11-yard line of Champlain. Then in the next play, Majeski will take the pitch, but watch what happens. Instead of running, he's going to throw it. Marcus Plager for the touchdown catch. Majeski would run the two-point conversion. They're in front, 21-18. Champlin with a fourth and three from the Hastings 25. But Jake Nelson's pass for Ryan Vondelin comes up short, and so do the Rebels. Hastings with a rally tonight. The champions from 5A win 21-18. Our Tim McNiff caught up with Hastings head coach Bob Majeski after the game. All right, Randy, thank you very much. You're with Bob Majeski and the champions pushed, but you get out of the gate with the win. One's plenty, you know, unfortunately, but uh, I don't think neither club was very pleased with how they played tonight, but uh, we hung on to win, so good for our kids, and we'll, hopefully we're better next week. You've got that target, whether these kids were there, they played last year, not fair or not, they have that target on them as champions. They responded in the second half like champions. Yeah, the first half, I was, I think all of our kids were embarrassed. In the second half, they played a lot better, and good for them and good for us, but we got a long ways to go, and, you know, being a target, it is true, but uh, you know what? Bring it on, and we'll see what happens. What did you tell the kids at halftime? Play like men. I mean, they're playing scared out there. They're playing timid, um, not doing the right things, and they just take it upon themselves to do better. So that's why they did it. You found yourself a quarterback tonight? Well, we found a halfback quarterback, and we found some other things, too. I'm happy that Thor came through at the end there and had a nice pass to set up a touchdown, and, and John had a couple passes you know, throwing, so we got a couple weapons there. You may be reluctant to talk about your son, but uh, that has got to be a nice weapon to have back there, returning player of John's caliber. Yeah, and uh, he's a good kid and uh, a nice kid, and we got a lot of good kids on this team, and he fits right in with them. Well, you may be biased, but we think your son's pretty special, too. Congratulations. Best of luck the rest of the way. Okay, thank you very much. Bob and Jeske and Hastings get out of the gates with the 21-18 victory. You would have thought he was in the playoffs with his reaction right there, Randy. Let's send it back to you. Gene Doherty, 16 carries, 209 yards, three touchdowns. Nice run here. Third quarter, it's 32 zip. The reserves are in for Hutch. And here's a nice touchdown run. Pat Homa will take a 24 yards for the score to make it 38 to zip. The cadets outplayed tonight. Senior linebacker Eric Katzenmeyer with the blitz on the cadet quarterback. It's a sack. It's not a good night for St. Thomas. 38 zip final. Raiders overpowered Como Park today. Senior Calvin Hugger with a nice run here. 19 yard gain as Creighton's offensive line starts to mow people down and set up some running lanes. This would set up a touchdown. Brody Grandis rolls left, finds junior Matt Cadwell open. It's a touchdown strike, 19 yards, and the Raiders are on their way. Como Park gets on the board, though. Nice scoring play here. Number nine, Garrett Paytich to number 44, Dan Katz. Right down the middle, and it's a touchdown. You don't see that very often against Creighton. 
and that's a score. But the Raiders win, e win easily today, 41-7 the final. Their defense does the job as they open up their independent schedule with a win. Earlier today, Arlington and White against Humboldt, second quarter. Watch number 23 for Humboldt, Robert Nayola, with the interception. He'll take it 55 yards for the touchdown. Humboldt takes a 14-0 lead at this point. Their defense was big all day. Watch the sack now by number 52, Christopher Momo. Humboldt will win big today over Arlington as you see the defensive sack. Final score today, 36 to nothing. So Humboldt is on the board with a win. In Maple Grove tonight, Crimson quarterback Mitch Brecky drops back, finds Ross Mullenberg. This one covers 47 yards, closing the gap to 28-14 Roseville. Nice play here for Maple Grove. Later in the third, Raider quarterback Bobby Bonine dumps it off to Will Williamson. 37-yard gain brings it down to the Crimson four-yard line. Nice play there, and it would set up a touchdown. Bonine will pitch it to Will Turner. He will score, and Roseville wins tonight. Final score, 34-20 over the Crimson. Anoka at White Bear Lake tonight. Hey, that's Kelly McNiff, Tim's niece. She turns 18 today. Happy birthday, Kelly. First quarter action, Anoka punts it away. Jake Rodriguez, the big return. He'll get it into Anoka territory with this return. Oh, what a block. Couple of blocks there. For another block right down the sidelines. And nice nifty moves for the Bears return man, Rodriguez. First, court, first play of the second quarter, it's Jake Casey deciding to keep it. Punches it in. 7-0 to score there. White Bear Lake wins it 27-0. Benilde St. Margaret's tonight. The Red Knights hosting Prior Lake. Ryan Mendelkove is gone. 70 yards on the touchdown run in the first quarter. The Red Knights are in front. 7-zip at this point. But Prior Lake would come back to win. Watch the counterplay by number six, Tony Doherty. He will take it in for a nine-yard touchdown run right, right, right. Where is he? Well, maybe we're just going to see Mendelkove's touchdown. We got the wrong one in, I guess. Final score tonight, Prior Lake winning at 30. Family Catholic debuted their football team. 31 players on the squad. The Fire hosting Jordan. No stands yet. They watch from a hill. Number 21, Tommy Caspers rips off a 10-yard run right here. Good job, Tommy. Later, it's Andy Link for Jordan. Watch this. 67 yards to the end zone. Jordan takes a 13-0 lead on this play, and they would go on to win. As we watch the touchdown run, Link cutting back, and he's gone for the touchdown. 67 yards, the final today, 38 to nothing, Jordan over Holy Family. Debut of Paul Miller as head coach at South St. Paul. He's the former head man at Apple Valley in St. Olaf. He's also a Packer alum. Second quarter, Packer running back, Adam Turgeon. Finds some open room, he's gone. 41 yards for the score, game tied 7-7. Later in the second, Tartan quarterback, Zach Ryan, finds an open Aaron Foote. Tartan wins the game 19-7 over South St. Paul. Look at this pass. Right into the end zone for the touchdown. Breck hosting Brooklyn Center tonight. Second quarter, Mustang junior quarterback Liam O'Hagan streaking T.J. Thiel. Gone 60 yards. Breck leads 36 to nothing at this point. Brooklyn Center tries a little trickery here. Chang Tao on the reverse. Mustang senior Mark Jagler with a nice stick in the backfield. Brooklyn Center gets on the board late. John Peterson finds some room here, goes 21 yards for the score, 36 to seven final. Breck wins, let's hear from O'Hagan. We just got a good bunch of players coming out every year. We got a lot of, a lot of team spirit. You know, we were pumped for this game. I mean, like everybody, but I think we had a little extra tonight. I mean, we get a lot of practice in, we work hard, that's all it is. Holy Angels at Shakopee tonight. John Back is the quarterback on the option. Keeps it, takes it into the end zone. 13-0, Holy Angels. In the fourth quarter, Shakopee would come back. James Boys hits Justin Martinez in the end zone. Watch the catch. It's a pretty one. The comeback, however, falls short. Holy Angels wins tonight, 13-7. Dan Spriggs, the new head coach at Southwest. And in the early going, South trying to take uh, control of things here. Cody Dyer will keep it. And the Lakers will make him pay with a good stick coming up right here. But South would prevail in this one. Dyer on the keeper will go 23 yards here on for the touchdown. The final score today was 51 to nothing. South the winner over Southwest.